can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do. If he says the horse can do, can Hello once again, racing fans, and welcome to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Sunday, May the 26th races at Hastings Racecourse. we got eight thrillers yep. uh, set for the Sunday program, should be a good day. Yeah, highlighted by a very competitive field of older boys for 25. That looks like good a very sprint. salty race. Uh, should be a nice weekend. We uh, talked about that already. The weatherman. Well, last week, okay. Yeah, weatherman, we're supposed to be in good shape, aren't we? Yeah, yeah they said it uh, should be a dry track this week. We have had some off tracks. Yeah. Should be a dry track this week. Uh, first of all, we're going to go back to last Monday, the holiday card, which was a great day. Out of Most Hastings. impressive performance of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Herbie D. Keep uh, your eye on the five horse here. Herbie D with Amadeo Perez for Rob Gilker and uh, George Robbins. Amadeo gives him a very heady ride here. He sees a uh, shrug going up to the lead. Herbie D has got the most speed. He could take the lead. But Amadeo gets him up there and just kind of tries to settle him in. He had him on cruise. Like, like he was yeah. going a mile or something. Like he yeah. really didn't send him to clear shrug, but he just kind of let him glide up and... He was always in a good, comfy spot. And Shrug's kind of, Frank, I know, wants to get to the outside. He can't get back. Like The fractions are too slow for him to get back and get off the rail to get in the two path. Because yeah. it seems like that's where the horse was a little bit more comfortable. But Commander took that spot away of the one horse. But uh, Herbie D, you know, he's traveling really well here. Yeah, absolutely. Never not in control of this race. You see Shrug come up to him, uh, get his nose up to him and try and give him a run for his money here. And uh, Herbie D is absolutely cruising, uh, 44 and 4. For fun. For like, like still, yeah. look at tight lines on Amadeo here. Just, yeah. There's a lot of horse here. And, and these uh, are white and red checks. Not to be confused with the red and white checks that's that are running the third right. right now. And uh, ask him a little bit here, and he just absolutely romps home. Uh, 50 inches. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Final time of 15. I thought he was going to break the track record. It when it, yeah. if he, I thought he, I, I could envision the track record being broken, but it just 115 and 15. He's like one fifth off the track record and did it very Smoking comfortably off fast. a big, big layoff. Big props to Rob Gilker and uh, like Corky Russell. Yeah. Vicky Gilker did a great job getting this horse ready to off the big layoff and uh, beat quality field. Those are nice horses. He, he made that look easy. That was the one not coming into the race is what does he beat? And uh, you can't say that about him anymore. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a horse that uh, I wouldn't be surprised to show up uh, in Emerald Downs in August. Yeah, I can see him in the Long Acres Mile. But, uh, but congratulations once again to owner George Robbins and uh, rider Amadeo Perez. The Gilkers, excellent job. Herbie D wins the Johnny Longdon 6,000. On to the Sunday card. Uh, first race on the programs for two-year-olds. Made in 20s. Yep. We're going three and a half furlongs. Got some babies here. Uh, I've gone to the one horse, Miss Dickey. Uh, Troy Taylor has three in here. And you know Aaron Grider going to be on the livest one. And... Uh, so I'm going to land on the son of or daughter of Sir Galovic. Uh, pretty nice works there, 48 and change out of the gate. And uh, I, I'm not crazy with the post, but you can't have everything. But uh, right. the one Miss Dickey to win it. Put the five Hanrahan uh, in for second. Colt by Matty G for Greg Tracy. It is a very good job getting his two-year-olds ready. He's an excellent uh, pr preparer of, of two-year-olds. Uh, so don't be surprised if this horse even wins the race. And the six horse, no, it's Ali. Uh, put that one in for third. Uh, a daughter of Cause to Believe also has excellent works. Enrique Gonzalez, the number two rider of the uh, North American Third yes. Red Corp. So uh, I went one, five, and six. Miss Dickey to win it. I agree with Miss Dickey. And uh, I don't know if the post would be much problem for her because she's very quick out of the gate. If she breaks well, you never know in the afternoon, but no. she, she breaks sitting well. Sitting there long. It's a, the problem with the one hole is that you get loaded first. Yeah. And now, as a two-year-old, if everyone goes in quickly, that's fine. The two of them are putting up a bit of a fuss. You're sitting in there for a kind long of go to sleep in time there. and fall asleep. So yeah. I mean, that's one reason why I know a lot of trainers and riders really don't want the one hole going three and a half for lungs. But we'll so, see. But if she gets out of there quick, I think she'll be tough to beat. She looks pretty quick. Uh, the second spot, I put Abiel out of the Monica Russell barn, uh, son of Cause to Believe. Uh, I like the work pattern. I really like Miss Dickey, and after that, it was kind of uh, yeah. trying to see. I, I looked Anytime over and over and over. You've got to look at them in the paddock, too. Absolutely. They'll tell you a lot. If they're being Absolutely. fractious and silly, you know their mind is not running. Watch these kind of horses in the paddock, and uh, th that'll give you some clues. Absolutely. Some will be nice and composed, and at least maybe if their work's aren't as fast, but at least you'll know 
that they'll, they're going to put forth a good race. They're handing everything professionally. So you might get a better price on certain horses to run second or third. But, but you'll see. But definitely look at them in the paddock if, you, if you're at the track. Absolutely. Very good advice. Uh, and in the third spot, I put another one of the Troy Taylor runners, Saratoga Vic. The other Sir Galovic in here. Uh, this one's a, a gelding, and uh, Robert Skelly takes the call for Troy Taylor. I got one, two, and four in the baby race, the opener. On to the second, a maiden special weight. Three-year-olds and up going long. Mile 16th. There. Mile and a 16th. Very good race. Uh, uh, field of seven. I've gone to the sixth, Bluegrass Pride. Uh, two good runner-up efforts here to Amazing Rossi and Go For Guinness. Uh, I don't see the distance being a problem for the son of Bluegrass Cat. Bluegrass Cats can get the distance. Uh, Craig McPherson uh, is off to... He's due for some luck. Yeah. He's got a lot of seconds and thirds, and uh, it's not going to take long before these start to turn into wins. And uh, I think today could be Blue Bluegrass Pride's day. The second spot I put a horse, another one I think could win it is Monahy. A horse who's been crying out for distance yeah. his whole career. He has six starts. He's been well backed in most of those. And uh, has never got to run long. I had it in my head for some reason that he'd run long one time last year, but he never did. Uh, they've been patiently waiting for uh, the four-year-old now to finally run long. I know they're high on his chances when the race did yep. come up long. It finally did. Aaron Grider takes the call. I have Monahy in second. And the third spot, I have Whose Daddy Is That? Uh, really good runner-up uh, effort to stole it in his first race. He was absolutely flying down the lane. The only question mark is he's going long off only one start, and that's why I have him in the third spot. I went six, five, and two. Yeah, I, I've gone to the five, Monahy. I, I think this horse will, will relish the extra ground. Uh, I think he's going to get the lead in here and going to slow things up. Uh, I'm going to try Monahy to win it with uh, Aaron, Aaron and Grider in the saddle. Uh, I put the six, Bluegrass Pride, you know, a very chalky uh, favorite exactor here. But Blinkers go back off. They tried an experiment with Blinkers on last time and didn't seem to run any better or any worse. But yeah. I don't like the way he's giving ground at the end of races. I, I, that's my only concern with him going a mile on the 16th is that he was giving ground at the end of the race. And, you know, this horse, you know, he's not like running at horses and, and galloping out strong. And yeah. that's why I think he may be vulnerable as, as the favorite. And I put the one, Peyton's best, so I'm sure we'll love the distance change. A horse that runs second, I know, for, albeit against cheaper. But I think that our last call is a pretty nice horse of the Rosie Anderson barn yeah. uh, that ended up going in 17 and change. That was an excellent time for the day. And this horse was a good second, so uh, give this horse some respect as well. I went five, six, and one. I definitely think Monahy on the stretch out. In the third race, I've uh, got some non-two fillies and mares here. BC bred non-three allowance, going six and a half furlongs. I'm going to end up on the one horse, Graffiti Grace. A uh, good runner-up effort to Dance the Wind, who came back to win yeah. the non-winners of uh, four, actually, an optional 35 that was run last week. And that uh, Graffiti Grace only has to maneuver out of the one hole. That's the only tricky part, is that this horse did draw outside last time and was uh, afforded the luxury of a nice, comfortable trip outside of horses. And I just worry maybe about the inside. This horse may get pinned down. If he doesn't, if she doesn't, fancy the inside going. Then I think the two-horse courtroom kiss, who's a three-year-old filly tacking some older mares in here, uh, could be dangerous. I thought that was a really good run against, I think, so last time. Yeah. Had to battle on the pace. I know it was a very slow pace, but still, the fractions were... The la final part of the race was run really quickly, and this horse held on for fourth, and prior to that, she was a third behind Market Way and, and uh, Lady Henrietta, so I thought that was an, an impressive race as well. I just think she could control the fractions, and that's why Courtroom Kiss must be respected and could be very dangerous in this spot. And I put the five, uh, an older mare, Bill Bow, in here, uh, distant third to dance the win in Graffiti Grace, but it still had a run. Got to run over the course, and um, certainly will, I think will improve. And uh, she gets off the rail, which is probably going to be going to help her out a little bit. So I went one, two, and five. I think Graffiti Grace is the best horse. Got nice works. I just concerned a little bit about the post draw, but I went one, two, and five. I agree. I think Graffiti Grace is a monster in here, especially with the way uh, Dance the Wind came back mm -hmm. and crushed that field last week. So uh, I got Graffiti Grace on top as well. Uh, I put Bill Bow, horse you just mentioned. Uh, as you mentioned, has a run over the course now. She was running uh, very competitively in these uh, starter allowances in California. Nice to get the start under her belt. Uh, Antonio Reyes takes over for the injured uh, Dave Wilson. And uh, in the third spot, I put Sunnyside Gal. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with her race last time. Uh, went up to the lead, got very reasonable you fractions. You weren't the only one. The horse was 7-5. to five. There were a lot of <laughs> Yes, there was a lot of people that were semi-disappointed. Uh, but I like the fact that they put her back in here. Uh, there's yeah. plenty of places they could have dropped, and uh, they said, no, we're going to put her back in here. This is where they think they belong, and you have to respect those connections. I got one, five, and six. On to the fourth. Phillies Mares, 4,000, non-winners of the year. 
And I've gone to the five fools never know out of the Pat Jarvis barn because I think it's the only speed in the race. I look and I just don't see, I, I think the tough horses in here uh, are closers, like Rainbow's mm. in the Woods. Yeah, that's a logical horse, but he, right, you're right, deep closer. So uh, I think fools never know. Frank Fuentes is having a very strong meet. I think he's going to be able to control the pace on this horse, and uh, she might just sneak off and win it. I put Rainbows in the Wood, who's uh, ran three very solid races this year. Yeah. Uh, always seems to run late. Two seconds to Hidden Harbor, who's uh, the kind of boss in this category. Uh, and in the third spot, I put C.I. to I. Uh, good second first time out this year. Then uh, come back over a nasty track where it was kind of speed favored. Nobody was making up much ground that day. And uh, I, I just kind of toss that race out. She gets a dry, dry strip. She's had a nice little breather. She should be fresh. So I put her in the third spot. I went five, seven, and eight. Yeah, I've gone to the seven rainbows in the wood. I'm you know, going to be the favorite, likely. Uh, 14 to one last time, probably going to be three to I'm one really or not five get that this to two. Time. But a uh, big run from off the pace. I know the fractions were a little helpful for her, but uh, still not a tough field. I, I, I see maybe the one Susan's luck in the five Fools never know hooking up, and uh, I, I, I think I'd look for the one Susan's luck to run a little bit better. Yeah, uh, I thought this horse got caught up with a pretty good my bail out last time, and uh, a lot easier I think with fools never know as your pace pressure. So yeah. a couple of good works too for for Jim Brown. I respect the barn, uh, but Rainbow's in the wood for me. Uh, Susan's luck second, and I put Call Me Jewel, who had a probably a little closer to the pace than. Uh, this filly would have liked and uh, went off Lasix for her uh, 2013 debut, continues to run without Lasix. But uh, I think her best race is when she's held in reserve the first part and get running. So maybe look for her to come running late if the fractions are fast and maybe get in there at a good price. Oh, it's 7, 1, and 6. On to the fifth race, the start of the pick four. 4,000 non threes going six and a half. I'm going to go to the four horse, Count Green. I see a pile of speed in here. I see Joshua yeah. Jet Fuel going. I see the, the uh, eight dog rock going, the yeah. 10, none of that, the 11, Ray's Reno. I see some fractions, yeah. some fireworks. I'm going to hope that the, the four horse, Count Green, who's had the run under his belt. That was for 7,500 non three, drops for non three, four. Look at some of his races last year when he was in the four level. This horse was very competitive. I know it was going long, but still, he's going to get a favorable pace scenario. Scott Williams uh, takes over. And I, I like Count the Green a lot. I think this horse will run a good race at a nice price. But the two, Dill went in for second, another one that dropped in class last time and no match for notice sal and minstrel's time but this race has come up considerably easier than yeah. that one did that was a dirty top four grander with those two horses dropping in class and the five horse mass mailing probably shouldn't have chased the speed last time this horse is better when i think sitting off of a horse and uh, raiding it and, and letting the speed go and i think in this race he'll have to because others are faster and he might take the nice box seat in behind two or three a, th a three-ply speed duel, and uh, I think this horse could get a better trip. But last time was out part of the pace, was doing the fighting and tired late. This time covered up, might be a good price, 4-2. I went 4-2-5. I, I see some prices in here. I went uh, to the 6 Eustonia, a horse, uh, yep. a horse you picked a couple times. Uh, again, as you mentioned, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, pace in I here. I see pace. Mm -hmm. I definitely see pace. I stayed uh, away from the speed, yeah. Eustonia made a nice move last time to run second to Little Brown Guy, who... Uh, had dropped into this level for the first time in his life and was much the best that day. So he ran into a tough one. And uh, it was a short field, not a whole lot of pace to run at. Little brown guy just got up to the front, set comfortable fractions and ran away from him. I see more pace in here, so I think Eustonia might be able to get up and get the money here. I put uh, Mass Mailing, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, I got him in the second spot. Another one that should be a nice closing move under Fernando Perez. And the third spot I put Dillwyn. I got a couple of your horses in the second and third spot. Uh, Dillwyn should run on, uh, as you mentioned, a horse who's been running against tougher. He finds a, a spot he fits into well here in the 4,000 non three. I got six, five, and two. On to the six, Phillies and Mares, 7,500 non three. And I went to uh, your likely favorite, number five, Tecolote, uh, out of the Anita Bolton barn. Aaron Greider uh, rides back. Got in a fair bit of trouble last time, kind of got in mm -hmm. behind heels, got a little bit further out of it than uh, Mr. Greider probably would have liked to have been. Uh, still rallied, made a decent move at the head of the lane, just couldn't out, run down Danny's chant. But uh, drops in the 7,500 level, I think she looks like she's going to be pretty tough in here. The second spot, I put Closing Intentions. The horse had posted a big 57 buyer her last start where uh, she got on the lead and absolutely cruised. She could probably get the lead here again today and uh, maybe dictate what's going on in the race and 
maybe try and hang on as long as you can. And the third spot I put Reveling. A horse who ran uh, good at the 17.5 level or first out this year. Ran back and just ran, ran last, ran uh, a terrible race. Yeah. Not sure what happened. Craig McPherson is a very uh, accomplished horseman, of course, one of the better ones here at Hastings. Uh, I'm just going to throw out that last race. The drop to 7,500 to help her, too. I got five, four, and two. I agree with the five. Tecalodia, this horse is pretty live on the class drop. Pretty good run for 17. This is a considerably easier company. And generally, these 17.5 horses that drop in for 7,500 are going to be a lot tougher. And they're, they're the horses to beat. So Tecalodia at a short price. But the six long lorry, another one dropping from 17.5 down for 7,500. I've got her in, in the mix. Uh, Antonio Reyes will take over. Uh, this horse had a wide oat trip again last time. It had some tough trips from outside draws. I just think this horse, there's more there. And, and I'm hoping that it surfaces uh, on Sunday. And the three-horse Cassidy Storm I have for third. I think this one will win maybe the pace battle with the four-horse closing intentions. That's just my play. I know it's a three-year-old tackling some older fillies, but still, I thought the horse ran very well in game against uh, Pineapple and Uniqua. But I want five, six, and three. I think Tecalotes are going to be really dangerous. On the seventh race, uh, 25,000 or older horses sprinting. Uh, I go into the three pop artist, um, solid horse, continues to run good races, doesn't run yeah. a lot, very often, but Dino's got the key to him, he keeps him when he does run, running he every six weeks, the bank, and yeah. uh, he, he, he runs top races, so uh, pop artist for me, I put the five, uh, stolen Otis in for second, a wide out trip and a big bulky field at 25 claimers last time, I know that traffic troubles will be a lot less in this particular race, there's only six other rivals instead of... Uh, Ten other rivals like he had last, or nine other rivals like he had last time, but stolen Otis, I think, would be better trip for him. And I put the four horse, uh, Ganbe, who ran lights out last time, was closing up very well, and was put a little scare in a stormy Canuck at the end of the race. So I, I like him. I like him better going along, but uh, still, he surprised me sprinting and ran a good race. But uh, I like Pop Artist. Uh, he's a cool horse and uh, going to be dangerous. Three, five, and four. I agree. It's tough to go against Pop Artist. He just yeah. he just seems to win, right? He just just yeah. wins and wins boring. and wins. And uh, I put Gambia, a horse you mentioned, in the second spot. Yeah. Uh, very classy old guy. He's made 176000 uh, He He's always running at the end. He'll be running at the end again. If, he, if there's enough room for him to get up there, that's the question. As you mentioned, probably a horse that would fit better going a little bit further. But ran a bang-up race second Stormy, to Stormy Canuck. And third spot, I put Mears Miracle, a horse that ran a good second to Pop Artist, first start out in the year, mm -hmm. and then came back in that last 25 and kind of got fried on the front end. He was, went in very quick fractions, 21 and 4 and 45. Uh, under a fair, fair bit of pressure and just kind of faded back. Only still only got beat two and a half lengths. Uh, I think if Grider can get him to maybe settle a little bit and yep. be running at the end, he could make a little bit more noise in here. Uh, Mia's miracle in third. I got three, four, and six. On to the nightcap. Three year olds and up, made him ten thousand. Uh, I've gone to the three car talk. Uh, horse around a good uh, third behind Michael's glory. Be interesting to see how Michael's Glory runs in that 25. That'll kind of give you a little uh, indication, maybe, of where Car Talk fits in here. Uh, Michael Glory right. comes out, makes some noise in that 25. You'll know that uh, Car Talk got beat by a decent horse. Uh, in the second spot, I put a uh, horse that could well be your favorite, Lord Harlow, uh, taking a significant drop from 25,000, running against horses like Knightsbridge and Wings of Time yeah. and Leprechaun Kid and Run Stormy company Run. Change, yeah. yeah, very. Uh, his company lines are much tougher than uh, any of uh, the other horses that have landed in this race. So I have Lord Harlow in second. And the third spot, I put second Eclipse, a uh, horse who's uh, coming up, but a horse who's been, uh, made a nice late charge last time, uh, only got beat a half length. And uh, he does move up to, from 5 to 10, but uh, some of these 10s don't come up overly tough. Uh, I was looking for a horse to put in third. Uh, could have went with Bullock or another dropper, but I ended up on second Eclipse. I got three, seven, and five. Yeah, I like the seven horse, Lord Harlow. I think this horse is pretty live. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely bred to get the dis distance. Uh, just an even effort last time against way better maidens. I, I, I just think Lord Harlow is going to be extremely dangerous. Good works, a couple of minute and change works. The distance change helps. Leading right, last year's leading rider, Emmanuel Perez. I mean, there's a lot of positives here yeah. for the seven, Lord Harlow. His main danger will be the three car talk, as you mentioned, a good third to Michael's glory, but he's definitely bred to run on. He's by Bernardini, yeah. out of a deputy minister mayor. There's lots of distance in the pedigree, and uh, Robert relaxes horses very well. So, I mean, this, this guy will, will definitely run on, I think. And uh, I got car talk in for second. I put the one, Block Door, you mentioned, uh, uh, in on the class drop in for third. Uh, definitely. This race has come up a little tougher for him with some class droppers, but he's uh, still he's got to run a couple of good races already this year. He's pretty game. Maybe he can get the lead and uh, be, be dangerous. But uh, it's 7-3-1 uh, 
for me in the eighth and final. And that'll do it for our analysis of the Sunday, May the 26th races. Next up on screen will be a quick recap. We'll get the slate up here for my selections for the, the Sunday program. Back in race number one, I went to the one. Miss Dickey won five and six. In race number two, I went to the five. Monaghy, five, six, and one. Race number three, the one. Graffiti Grace, one, two, five. Race number four, the seven. Rainbows in the wood. The seven, one, and six. Race number five, I went to the four. Count green, four, two, five. Hopefully we're counting some green. The sixth race, one to the five, Tecalote over the five over the six and three. So five, six, three for me in the six. And the seventh race, number three, Pop Artist, three, five, and four. And the eighth and final, number seven, Lord Harlow, seven, three, and one. On to my picks. There we are. I agree with Mike in the first. Number one, Miss Dickey over the two and the four. In the second, I went to the six, Bluegrass Pride over the five and the two. In the third, probably my best bet of the day here, number one, Graffiti Grace over the five and the six. In the fourth, number five, Fools Never Know, looking for him to dictate the pace over the seven and the eight. In the fifth, I went to the six, Eustonia over the five and the two. In the sixth, I agree with Mike on number five, Tecalote over the four and the two. In the seventh, again, I'm with Mike on number three, Pop Artist, tough to bet against him over the four and the six. And in the nightcap, I went to the three, Cartock over the seven and the five. Well, that'll do it for the Sunday, May 26th edition of Handy Capper's Corner. Hopefully you enjoyed everything. Uh, pretty impressive performance from Her Herbie D last week, Absolutely. though. That was huge. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, As you mentioned, probably the most impressive uh, oh, race definitely. of the year. Yeah, that was so cool. Well, anyway, good luck, everyone, uh, in your wagers on the Sunday program. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here at the Derby Bar and Grill on Handy Capper's Corner. If he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I can do.